Hey everyone, welcome back to another tutorial of the node concept. Today we are doing the geometry node, and uh, yeah, I don't, I won't be, you know, boring you with some random introduction. So let's just get into Blender, and uh, you know, we are running quite slow on these last few, you know, nodes uh, because you know I am having some problem, and uh, anyway, we'll be doing the tutorial somehow and we'll be finishing it real soon so we have like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13, 14, 14 more nodes and uh, yeah most of them will get combined into few ones so all right so today we are going to do is the geometry node all right so here it is so another node full of vectors and two values so uh, we'll be firstly doing the values, then we'll be moving on to the vectors because you know values are easy. So uh, first thing, the pointness. So we are going to uh, going like this, this, and then this, 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 this something like that. All right. So uh, the pointness. So what it does is it calculates uh, which edges are sharp and which are not, and based on that, it gives you a output between you know a blend between zero and one which is black and white color basically and so uh, if we just hit control I mean yeah control shift left click on geometry it will connect the position now if we press control shift and right click and drag and connect that to the viewer and you can select the pointiness to the color and if you press shift Z you can see we have is this white color so this is because you know uh, the contrast is pretty damn low and we have to uh, brighten up that contrast uh, so a contrast of then we'll do build and you can still see there is not much so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm press ctrl 2 and I'm going to add in some loop cuts so uh, quick loop cuts and go like that Ta -da, and go up and one more right here okay so uh, now we have quite pointy so uh, these places are pointy and that is smooth and there we go so you can now see uh, sharp edges over here are represented by a uh, white color and uh, the you know, flatter faces are denoted by a black color so uh, once you get this and uh, you can do it you know uh, add in a color ramp and change these values and you can get you know, a sharper blend between them and then you can use this as a factor to add, uh, you know, scratches and dust and, uh, you know, varying off of paint to your objects and things like that. So uh, that's how the point nest works. So uh, next we have the back facing. Oops. Uh, shift. Oh, come on, man. Back facing to the color. Okay. So uh, you will see is a black color. So. Why is it so? Because we don't have something that is having a bad face. So we're gonna add in a plane, and and and, and yeah, that's it. Gonna add this material over here, and if you press Shift Z, you will see the bottom face is now white, and the top face is black. So uh, why is it so? Uh, the back facing, what it does is it uh. It uses uh, the direction of the normals which the face is facing and based on that it gives a black or white color uh, based on the you know, normals. So over here if you press uh, this button, normals, you can see there is that small arrow with that. Ah, there it is. So, so a bit too small. Alright. So this is the f direction of uh, the normal the face is facing. And if you press Shift Z, you will see uh, the correct normal gets the black color, and the uh, back face, which is you know this dark inverted normal, uh, it gets the white color. This is because uh, when you are using this as a factor, for example, if we use over here is a uh, emission, or we have an emission over here, and we'll add in a uh, transparency. Oh no, sorry, not transparency. We'll just duplicate that and let's make the strength zero. Alright. And ta-da! Now we use the factor as one over here. Oops. Back facing. Okay. Alright, so uh, now you can see the white or uh, the black portion is treated as the first shader. That's why it's kept black. 
so whenever you mix it in the mix shader the first node gets the material which is to be displayed and the next uh, next node gets you know the back facing stuff so it's now black it's not emitting any light over here well it's emitting over here so this is how the back facing works right so that is it and just delete that delete that Control X, Control X, Control X, and next we're gonna move on to position. All right. So uh, this one is another interesting one. Now uh, position in the geometry. Uh, what it does is it actually. Uh, well, yeah. I'll just. Oh, I forgot to add it. All right. So uh, currently you can see we have a. A uh, normal looking blend between the red, green, and the blue, as it is there in the texture coordinate as well. So, uh, this position, what it does is it gives the vector uh, outputs based on the position of the object in your uh, world space. So, if I move this on the y axis, now you can see the y, uh, the green color is dominating. That's why we don't have, uh, uh, you know red color over here though we have a yellow because of the mix of yellow uh, red and green we have yellow over there and similarly on the z axis we'll get now the blue color which is now getting you know treated with uh, this portion of you know, white green that's mixed of every uh, axis over here so i'll just enable the blue axis as well where is that display z tada there is our z axis now oh, whatever. So, uh, that is what the position is doing, now if we press Alt G, go back, and now if we br uh, bring it down, and now you can see we have no uh, blue, and now we have complete black, so, so it gives position, uh, position based uh, normals, so that's how position works, and next comes the normal, ta-da! Alright, so uh, this normal is quite different from normal which is over here in the texture coordinate. Now, uh, you have this normal and if you rotate your object like that, you know, you will see it uses the local space normal, so which is over here, you know, if you change that to local. So, the Z axis is this direction and as you can see it's over there. And similarly for the UV sphere as well. But uh, if you press, uh, if you connect this normal, and now if you see, we have you know by default uh, normals are facing in their respective direction. But as soon as you you know rotate it, now it uses a global uh, you know what's called that uh, x y what's what's that called yeah, so yeah global axis to calculate normals now. Uh, see, so the blue uh, blue color will be always pointing in the up direction. So, whichever direction you rotate your uh, UV sphere in this case, it will always be giving same normal output because it's uh, it's this cube is not uh, completely symmetrical. Uh, that's why the colors mix up and you get is a blend of red and uh, blue over here and that's causing this purple and cyan color over here so this is what the normal does next comes the tangent all oh, right so uh huh, so this one is a funny one and uh, why is it funny because uh, before making a tutorial we did some research on this tangent and we did not get a single uh, you know result on how it works actually so you know, Shubham came up with a possible explanation of uh, this tangent. This is actually is it's you know kind of a circle. So let's just move. Yeah, you know, we'll just add. Uh, Sunrise, no, it doesn't work. La la la. Fill in all P. Ta da. Okay, so uh, just a sec before we explain it, we're gonna. Uh, show you that the lines over here are actually going to help you tell what it actually does. So I'm bring a border, half border, even smaller, something like that. All right. So, huh. what uh, this tangent does is it takes a tangent based upon the normal. So uh, the normal of this face is facing the z-axis. You can see this 
small arrow and that is uh, the normal and the tangent according to that is every line which is perpendicular to it so which are these lines on the circles that you can see and now uh, the direction these lines are going from the center uh, uh, determines the vector so all the lines going towards this direction so you can see the direction these lines are facing is giving you the color so I don't know why it's uh, giving the color in the you know, wrong direction, I don't know. The red should go somewhere on this direction, not that. There must be some, some issue, I don't know. Alright, I have no idea about that one, maybe rotation. Or let's just apply the location and rotation and scale, and that should fix that. No? Oh, 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 alright. No, not, no, no, sorry. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> my bad. So it's treating the x as the negative direction, and the y, and y as the positive y, but the red as the negative red. So arrows are going completely wrong. I know I Anyways, so you know what the tangent does. So the red color gets in on the wrong direction somehow and the green as well. So green and red are completely flipped for no reason. But I guess the red uh I mean that blue is doing perfectly. Doing blue is doing its job. So that's you. So anyway, so that is what the uh, the tangent is doing. Whew, that was weird. <laughs> anyway, so uh, next continuing uh, the true normal. Ta da! Now uh, the difference between the true normal and the normal over here is that uh, even if you have a smoothing out surface, for example, let's just uh, remove these shit lines. Okay. Now uh, if we connect the normal. And we have not smoothed out the surface. You will see, you know, uh, normal are also not smoothed out. So now, if you smooth that, you'll get a smoother blend between the colors. So that's uh, done by the normal, normal. <laughs> and the next comes true normal. If you plug that in, it will always give a flat shaded normals. So it doesn't matter if you have a subsurface on and smooth it shading it will always give you know that sharp blend between the colors so you know it's just same as shit so this is the true normal so that is how it is working yay so that is as simple as that that's the basic difference between normal and true normal and there is not much of a difference other than that so these two work pretty much same other than this uh, you know, sharp edge thing. Alright, so uh, next comes the incoming. Alright, so this one is another interesting one. If I go to front view, right, so front view is a bad idea. So, uh, alright, so uh, the direction these red lines uh, are facing red, blue, and green, uh, the camera, which is, I uh, know, wait a sec. <laughs> Alright, so uh, the view, uh, from the view which we are seeing our mesh, we'll type that as well, uh, that is direction of uh, the light which is incident on the object and that will give us a color. So, uh, seeing it from the exact red uh, x axis will give you a sharp red color. And now if you move your camera, now like I'm moving, going up. So it's mixing up with the blue axis as well, and that's giving us a purple color. So, I don't, uh, you know, oh, if you are understanding what I'm trying to say, that's that's thing I'm trying to say. Right. So uh, now, if I move it to uh, this direction, you will see uh, there's a white color because all the three are mixing together to give a white color. Then, if you move on to the green, we'll get the green, and uh, top facing will get a blue. Hey, what is this still doing away? I don't. Know. So that is what our incoming is done and next i'm gonna have a sip of water and it's really really hot here in india and we can't live without a fan right now 
and we don't have an air conditioner in this room as well so we have to work in the fan and that's why we have uh, we might deal with some noise issues and that might cause a problem but you know you, you can understand the thing I'm saying I guess so anyways let's just continue next comes the parametric which is the last one in the geometry and then we are finished with this node as well all right so this gives weird looking thing all right we don't need this anymore right now so uh what this is doing is uh let's just show you i'm gonna triangulate this surface so yeah I'll flash it as well oh sorry flash it all right and i'm gonna turn on the wireframe as well so we don't need to go to the edmo <coughs> Okay, so uh, now you can see we have these weird looking triangles over here and uh, these triangles are actually kind of the crease among which uh, these normals are getting separated. So as you can see over here, I know uh, the reason of the coloring because there is no you know, yellow, I mean blue color adding in over here, I don't know why. But and now you can see uh, these lines are actually uh, the the seam so from here blending starts and here it ends and then again on the other side it starts and ends and giving you a random pattern so if you want to you know use that, use this as uh, normal for your wireframe you can use that but there is a separate node now for that I guess there is a wireframe node you can use that we'll be going through that uh, as well so yeah that's basically this and uh, yep so we are done with the geometry node as well next we are gonna go through I guess uh, wireframe no 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 not wireframe not yet uh, let's see object info I guess nope uh, isn't there another you know, node with a big 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 with that mm -hmm. no, it, yes, no. um, uh, huh, big nodes are all over so uh, the vectors are majorly over, so we'll be going through uh, the light path next. Alright, so a uh, light path will be our next tutorial. So uh, stay tuned to watch that video on our light path and you can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash blenderfile or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and I hope you learned and enjoyed this video and we hope to see you in our next Tutorial till then happy blending and keep ex experimenting you'll get better uh, the more you practice so practice makes perfect and I hope to see you in our next video till then bye